Deadline here with another Commodore 64 programming series video for Cities In. In this episode I'm going to cover custom character sets and smooth scrolling. I'm also going to introduce kick assembler macros. The default character set on the Commodore 64 is iconic and it fits the bill for a lot of applications of the machine. When it comes to games and demos, however, there's a somewhat unwritten rule that you should put the extra time and effort into creating your own characters. Custom character sets can also be used to make tiles, which combine two or more characters to create a larger image. There are many reasons why it is useful to do this. Backgrounds for game levels, larger fonts, and logos are just some examples of why you would want to do this. The Commodore 64 has two modes of displaying character sets. Standard character mode, which shows only two colors per character, and multicolor mode. I'm only going over standard character mode in this tutorial, but I'm including this information just so that you know that it's there. There are plenty of character set editors available from native C64 programs to cross-platform editors, which can save and export to various formats. I'm going to be using VCHAR64 by Ricardo Casada which can be found at his GitHub page. VCHAR64 is available for Windows, Mac, and Open Pandora and has a lot of great features. So let's open up VCHAR64 and edit our character set. I've already edited a character set, but let's load it up and have some fun. Just gonna put some happy little edges on our friends P and R. It's really up to your imagination as to what you want the characters to look like. Once we've got our characters edited, it's time to transfer them over so that we can work with them in Kick Assembler. You'll want to save your VCHAR64 project file in case you want to edit the characters later. Then export the character set to an ASM file. You will need to make sure that charset is checked and choose ASM as the file format. Remember to rename the file extension from the default .s to .asm. Now that we have the assembler file ready, it's time to load it into VS Code. Once you have it loaded into VS Code, the first thing you want to do is change the comment type from the semicolon to the double slash that Kick Assembler uses. Select the first semicolon in the file, then type Control H. In the Replace field, type in slash slash and then hit the Replace All icon, or type Control Alt Enter. Finally, scroll all the way to the bottom and comment out or remove the charset underscore count equals 2048 line. Save the file and it is ready for kick assembler. Now let's move over to the macro capability that is built into kick assembler. Here you can see a simple macro that I've made. The first line, dot macro screen clear color. This tells kick assembler that it is a macro named clear screen with an argument of color. Kick Assembler will put this macro in line when it is compiling. It starts off by loading the accumulator with the value 93 hex. Then jump to subroutine kernel char out which is $FFD2 in hex. Then it loads the accumulator with whatever you color you pass into the argument and stores that value at both D020 and D021 hex. Those are the background and border colors. Now that you understand what a macro is and how one is made, it's time to test out what we have so far. We already know about the constants.asm file from the previous tutorials, how to put in the basic upstart, and how to import files. So let's add our macro into the new program, which clears the screen and changes the color to black by putting the black parameter. And then we'll change the vic pointers to swap the character set that we just made. And as you can see, 
there's our character set that we made and we'll just do a four next loop and poke all the characters on the screen just to see them all okay now that we've got the custom character set going let's talk about the smooth scrolling and let's see what the Commodore 64 programmers reference guide has to say about smooth scrolling smooth scrolling the VIC-2 chip supports smooth scrolling in both the horizontal and vertical directions smooth scrolling is a one pixel movement of the entire screen in one direction it can move either up or down or left or right it is used to move information smoothly onto the screen while smoothly removing characters from the other side while the VIC-2 chip does much of the task for you the actual scrolling must be done by a machine language program and that's what we're doing here the VIC-2 chip features the ability to place the video screen in any of the eight horizontal positions and eight vertical positions positioning is controlled by the VIC-2 scrolling registers the VIC-2 chip also has a 38 column mode and a 24 row mode the smaller screen sizes are used to give you a place for your new data to scroll on from. And it says the following are the steps for smooth scrolling. One, shrink the screen. The border will expand. Two, set the scrolling register to maximum or minimum value depending on the direction of your scroll. 3. Place the new data on the proper covered portion of the screen. 4. Increment or decrement the scrolling register until it reaches the maximum or minimum value. Number 5. At this point, use your machine language routine to shift the entire screen one entire character in the direction of the scroll. And number 6. Go back to 2. Okay, so let's see to go into a 38 column mode bit 3 of location 53270 must be set to a 0 alright let's see what 38 column mode looks like so let's poke 53270 comma peak 5 uh, peak five three two seven zero and two forty seven okay so as you can see the borders on the left and the right have moved in one column And then to return to 40 column mode, set bit 3 of location 53270 to a 1. So poke 53270, peak 53270, or 8. And there we got our borders back to the way it comes when it turns on and now there's the 24 row mode bit 3 of location 53265 must be set to 0 and then to set to a 1 to turn it off so let's try it we'll just go back up here 53265 peak 53265 and 247 and there goes the top and bottom border or eight and it's the same bit on those locations all right now it says when scrolling in the x direction it is necessary to place the vic2 chip into 38 column mode this gives a new data a place to scroll from when scrolling left the new data should be placed on the right. 
When scrolling right, the new data should be placed on the left. Please note that there are still 40 columns to the screen memory, but only 38 are visible. When scrolling in the Y direction, it is necessary to place the VIC-2 chip into 24 row mode. When scrolling up, place the new data in the last row. When scrolling down, place the new data in the first row. Unlike X scrolling, where there are covered areas on each side of the screen, there is only one covered area in Y scrolling. When the Y scroll when the Y scrolling register is set to zero, the first line is covered, ready for new data. When the Y scrolling register is set to seven, the last row is covered. For scrolling in the X direction, the scroll register is located in bits two to zero of the VIC-2 control register at location 53270. As always, it is important to affect only those bits. <coughs> Okay. For scrolling in the Y direction, the scroll register is located in bits 2 to 0 of the VIC-2 control register at location 53265. As always, it is important to affect only those bits. The following poke does this. Yeah. And it's an AND with 248 and then plus X and Y of whichever scroll location you like. So there's eight possible scroll locations. Okay. To scroll text onto the screen from the bottom, you would step the low order three bits of location 53265 from zero to seven, put more data on the covered line at the bottom of the screen, and then repeat the process. To scroll characters onto the screen from left to right, you would step to the low order three bits of location 53270 from 0 to 7. Print or poke another column of new data into column 0 of the screen and repeat the process. If you step the scroll bits by negative 1, your text will move in the opposite direction. Okay, and then there's a little basic program here. We'll type it in. Okay, so I've got the program typed in, the basic program that's in the Commodore 64 Programmer's Reference Guide, and let's run it and see what happens. So you're getting a smooth scrolling, it's printing hello at the bottom and then scrolling up, but you can see a lot of artifacts on the screen while it's doing that. That's because uh, the basic is not fast enough to update the screen. That's why they suggest using machine language up here. So let's get this program converted over into machine language. Okay, so we're going to start by converting this basic program over into machine language. And uh, let's take a look in our constants file. We'll look for D011, the VIC control reg 1, that's what we want to use. 53265, and you can see right here, Y scroll is um, bits 0, 1, and 2. So let's go back to the program here. So we want to load the accumulator with fit control reg one. And then we want to end with 247. Let's see what is 247. F7 hacks. And then store accumulator and pick control reg one. So that's line 10. Well, we've already cleared the screen, so that's not needed. 
but we do want to move the cursor to the bottom of the screen. So, so let's load X one number screen. So 17 is 11 hacks. And then load accumulator. And we want to do 24. 24 would be 18. So we want to load the accumulator. Or no, we want to. Yes, load the accumulator with 11. Subroutine kernel try out. That will print Gonna put a little loop in here to count down the X register. Loop. Cursor down. So that'll print out um, 24. So to print out 24 cursor down keys, that's what we wanted. And then, what's next? Um, okay, right, so we want to make a new label here. Loop. Our scroll load accumulator with zero seven. That's not going to work. We're going to need to load X, load A, and then <clears throat> and that with 248, and with 248, which is F8 hex. Seven. So we don't need this load X really. Add with carrying zero seven. And store it back in the Vic control H one. Okay. And then let's see what's next. Um, text hello make a little label put the text hello in there we're going to print that out we're going to let me see here Right, we want to load X with number stream with hello message. No, let's put zero and load X. 
And then we want to load accumulator with hello message comma x x I said and then jump subroutine kernel char out increment x compare x with number string zero one two three four five six seven with zero seven branch if not equal to loop print hello ding 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 loop print hello it's our loop now do the printing of the hello on the bottom of the screen now this is going to be probably pretty fast so let's set up a register that we'll call we'll make a constant actually we might have a temporary place we can put Let's call it scroll register or T scroll register for temporary scroll register. We'll put it at C000 because that way we know it's not going to be being used. Okay, so we could have done it a different way, but. load a with 07 store the accumulator at T scroll ridge Actually, let's put six because we're already at seven up there. And then load the accumulator with Vic Control Reg One and it with two forty eight, which is F eight. I mean, add the carry T scroll ridge and store that in the Vic control reg one. And then we'll decrement Vic control. No, 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 no. T scroll reg. We'll decrement that. compare uh, load accumulator the T scroll range compare it with notion zero zero actually FF I think branch if not equal we'll make another loop here So we need another loop. We'll call it loop scroll reg loop scroll reg 
Okay. So that, that should take us through um, 7 to 0. And then we want to jump to loop print hello. Now, of course, that doesn't have the delay loop. It has on the basic program. So it should be pretty fast. Let's try it and see what happens. Oh, it's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So I must not have typed it in right. Okay, we're gonna put a delay loop in. And I also changed the um, add with carry to ORs up here and down here for the T scroll reg. So what we want to do is we want to load the Vic raster counter and let's compare it with a with a F with F8. Let's just see what happens. Branch if not equal. Or let's branch if carry clear to loop scroll reg. Let's see what happens. If it makes any difference. Nope, still getting some weird stuff. So it might, looks like I might have a couple of issues here. Okay, one thing I noticed right away is that there, we need another loop print hello start label and we're going to put that down here to the hello start at the end let's see if that makes any difference it did make a difference it's not doing anything now <laughs> all right so let's get out of that i'll take another okay so we've I've modified the print hello a little bit um, needs to be FF there um, so it's gonna load the hello message comma X based on the um, value of X then it's going to print out whatever is loaded into the accumulator um, hello message I put a dot byte zero at the end of the text so that is what triggers this branch if not equal so if it's equal to zero then it's gonna let it go through the through that loop into the next part which is load accumulator with zero six and stored in the temporary scroll register Okay, another thing I've just noticed is that I looped it back to print hello start when it needs to be up here at loop char scroll. So let's make it go to loop char scroll and see what it does. Mm, that's a little better. Okay, in between loop char scroll and the print hello start, I've put a carriage return. Into the mix, so it should print out each line one by one. Yep, just like that, but there's no scrolling going on. It might be going too fast. So let's try and slow it down a little bit and see what happens. Okay, close this out. Let's look at the raster counter. Let's try putting it at a lower number. Let's see what happens. Still not getting that scrolling effect.
Hmm. Okay, so I think we've got it sorted out now. What I've done is I've added a couple of timers at C00001000 and C00002000. And I've added... So, what we want to do is we want to check the Vic raster counter, compare it to when it's off screen. And if it's not in this location, just do a loop until it is so that it updates while it's off screen. So there's none of this flickering going on. Right, and then we load the bit control register, end it with F8 or it with the t temporary scroll register, which we load here with 06. It initially begins at 07. <clears throat> and then we add the timers in so we want to load accumulator with zero store it in both the timers loop timer one increment t timer one loop timer two increment t timer two compare it with ff branch if it's not equal to loop timer two which is the inner loop so it's going to do 0 to 255 on the inside loop. And the timer 1, it's going to do it 5 times. And then it's going to loop all the way through this back up to loop timer 1 for 5 times. And then finally it's going to decrement the T scroll register and then compare it with FF, which means that it's gone below zero and if it has then it'll loop to the char scroll label which is back all the way up here and it resets everything again so sets the scroll to 07 prints out a carriage return prints off the word hello again um, stores 06 in the t temporary scroll register over and over so and also added the dot byte zero at the end of the hello message so let's see what happens yes yeah, smooth scrolling it's the same exact program which was in the Commodore Programmer's Reference Guide, except it's in machine language now. As always, with any of our programming hijinks that we do on our channel here, you can download them from the GitHub webpage. We have repositories on there for a lot of different projects that we've done, including our holiday videos, so you should check them out. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more Commodore and other retro related programming videos and hijinks. Until next time, this is Deadline for CitiZen.